I've been working on getting a plan for rendering thin lines with good enough anti-aliasing for the kinds of uses I have in mind. And I've done a couple of experiments to see how different common anti-aliasing techniques turn out. And I have started to figure out a few things about what makes this look good and what makes it a problem. And one thing that's been coming up, that keeps coming up, is that when a line is standing still perfectly, it looks better if it's thin, but if it's moving even slightly, then a little bit of extra thickness, like instead uh, instead of using a thickness of 1.0, a thickness of 1.15 or 1.25, makes it look better. And the reason it looks better when it's a little bit thicker is because it never gets rendered as if it is only covering one pixel. So when a pixel is sort of sliding gradually across the grid, or when geometry is sliding gradually across the grid of pixels, if there are moments where it sort of collapses down into being just one pixel wide and then expands out to being two pixels wide with a little bit of blurring on one or both to sort of indicate the in-betweenness, then what happens is I get this effect of it sort of looks like it's growing and shrinking. Like I can clearly see the line is not a line, but it's it's instead this like blob that is sort of expanding and contracting in order to inch along like a worm or something. That's not the effect I want. And so when it's moving, it's if it's a little bit thicker, it never does that contracting thing. Because even when it becomes aligned with a pixel, it's already starting to grab a little bit from one of its neighbors so that it's got that thickness. And then as it slides across and gets sort of in between two pixels, well, it's still just got that same thickness. I'm not like rendering it two pixels wide so that I get the same issue of now it's going from two to three, two to three everywhere. It just sort of bl uh, nicely stays at two pixels wide and trades them off. Off. I've also noticed that the, everything looks a little better when I don't blend it all the way down. So the, the multi-sampling results from last time versus the exact precise uh, computation of the co pixel coverage showed me that it looks a little better when you overcompute the coverage by some amount. For whatever reason, the multi-sampling ends up with brighter values, and it looks like instead of just taking you know one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, etc., uh, for eight possible values, it was taking those and then doing something like square rooting them, which makes them a little brighter since numbers between zero and one become bigger when you square root them. So the point is, when I render something, it looks like if it's in between pixels, in order to avoid that blurry looking uh, effect that happens when I just get two different pixels side by side that are both half brightness, what I can do is just amplify the brightness a little bit at that level. And then to get the nice motion moving around, I need that extra bit of thickness. But this runs into a problem, which is that when a line is standing still, I don't want it to be thicker, and I don't want it to take up more space than I'm expecting. I want to be able to render an exactly precise still frame uh, without having that pop up, but I also want to be able to animate these things. And so the first thought I had was I need two different paths. I need a path for non-animating graphics and a path for animated graphics. Like I'll have my render rectangle static and my render rectangle in motion and this, so then I just have two different shaders or two different like a, a, an extra parameter in the vertex vertices or something that tells it which one we're doing something along those lines or maybe it's even just a matter of fiddling with the geometry on the front end but one way or another the the highest level API would be bifurcated in this way uh, but I went and picked some people's brains, and the best idea I heard, which came from Ryan Fleury, was to turn this idea into a continuous parameter instead of a discrete one. So instead of static or moving, the idea was to make a parameter in the call that is the current velocity vector of the thing that I am rendering. And that velocity vector was a really I interesting idea to me. It's a little bit more to send it down, but it means that now I know how fast something is moving. So if I'm rendering a rectangle, for instance, and I put a velocity vector on it, what I mean is this rectangle has traveled over this distance since the last frame, which means there might be a big gap of pixels where technically the rectangle in concept moved through those pixels, but it never got rendered there because of the sort of temporal aliasing that happens between frames. So this velocity vector gives me a way to add in like a single frame motion blur. It's not like a motion blur effect so much as it's a motion blur anti-aliasing. Uh, and it's anti-aliasing over that time aliasing. Instead of getting a single precise slice of time, I kind of want to bl blur together all the time between two frames is the idea here. And that might be overly specific. I might turn out that I want to not use the full range, but just sort of cap it off or have it taper off as it's getting bigger. I might also want to boost it when it's rather small because I know that if something's moving at you know, a quarter of a pixel per second, 
well, that's going to be enough width to make the moving line work. But if it's moving at a hundredth of a pixel per second, that that choppiness of the of the anti-aliasing of the moving line might reappear. So I'm going to play around with it. I might not be too precise about what the velocity vector has to mean when I turn it into a rendering thing on the screen. But I want to play with this idea of passing down the velocity as a part of the the uh, primitive vertex data and see what I can do to make both a standing still and moving line segment look good with a single code path. So let's experiment with this for a bit. All right, so I really like how this is looking. I think this is going to mostly solve the problems I was having before. I can get fast moving lines, slow moving lines, still lines, they all look great. And uh, I have a pretty clear idea of which things can turn out blurry and which things will turn out nice and crisp based on sort of positioning things. So when you have still lines between pixels, they're always going to be blurry. Now I can sort of see the best ways to handle that and where and when I'm going to have to think carefully about how I'm using pixels when I'm drawing thin lines and using these rectangles in different ways. There's still a lot to figure out to call this finished. I want to get in there, obviously support for moving in along the y uh, y axis i'm sort of ignoring y coordinates right now so that i could test this effect out in the x axis so now we got to get it to work on x axis y axis and of course on velocities that are you know in both the x and y direction simultaneously and then we need to work on uh, integrating the features from the tool 2d stuff those features are rounded corners, outline thickness, gradients in the colors. And we might want to even sort of optimize a bit more and play see if there are things we want to do, like is it going to be geometry shaders or uh, are we going to pack colors in a different way? There are a couple of things like that we might want to tinker with to really crank on the quality of this thing. And then try, finally, we'll plug all this in. But I think we've found the solution we're going to try to make work. And unless it falls apart terribly along the way, uh, we can sort of switch over to producing the new and improved renderer for Tool2D now. Anyways, thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you next time.